This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com slash theplainbagel to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code theplainbagel. It is one of the most mind-bending, abominable things to come out of the world economy. The negative yielding bond, a security where you effectively lend your money and get paid back less than what you provided. Adam Smith would be turning in his grave. It goes against the whole point of the debt market. The only reason people are willing to let you borrow their money is because you pay them an interest rate to keep them interested in the arrangement. Why would a lender ever agree to pay you for borrowing their money? And yet, many investors have agreed to this exact arrangement. In countries like Germany, the government has been successful in selling bonds that from the get-go promise investors a loss of money. And worldwide, it's estimated that there's roughly $15 trillion of negative yielding debt. Talk about a ripoff, a Ponzi scheme. And here's the crazy thing. It kind of makes sense if you look at it the right way. So today, let's take some time to understand why people would ever buy a negative yielding bond on today's plain bagel. Whether we like it or not, debt has long been a pillar of our economy. And when handled properly and in good faith, it can be a mutually beneficial agreement. Those with money are able to offer their funds to others who can then use the funds to pursue profit generating projects. In return, the borrower pays an interest rate to the lender to compensate them for the support, eventually paying back the amount once they have the funds to do so. This isn't to minimize the real problems we face with debt, but in the right circumstances, it is a win-win. But with negative yield bonds, the lender not only goes a period of time without their money, but they actually get paid back less than what they lent out, effectively paying the borrower for using their funds. It's an arrangement that you think only an imbecile would enter. And yet many smart investors have done just that by buying negative yield government bonds. Government bonds have long paid fairly low interest rates as it was. In some countries, the rate offered has been pushed past zero as central banks lowered interest rates to support their economies with monetary policy. So why would an investor ever agree to buy a negative yield bond? Well, to really understand the answer, we first need to go over some basic bond information. If you already know about yield maturity and things like that, you can skip ahead using the timestamp in the description below. Otherwise, stay tuned and we'll cover the basics. Standard bonds will often have their features defined when you purchase them. They will specify when the bond matures and the amount you will receive at this time. This amount, which is commonly $1,000 per bond, is known as the bond's face value or par value. The interest paid to the investor on a bond is known as the coupon payment, which just references how old school bonds used to have physical coupons attached to them that you had to actually turn into a location for your interest payment. And these payments are presented as a percentage of the face value. So a 6% coupon on a $1,000 bond will pay $60 a year although bonds frequently split this into two semi-annual payments. Now, just because the bond effectively involves an investor lending the government $1,000, the owner can sell the bond once it's initially sold again for more or less than its face value. This price can be a discount to face value, meaning that the new investor pays less than $1,000 and can receive the coupon payments and a bit of a bonus at the end when the bond comes due. Or it can be a premium to the face value, meaning the investor will actually lose a bit on what they paid for the bond. Because the price of a bond may differ from its actual par value, your actual return likely won't equal the coupon rate, but will rather be closer to the yield to maturity, an estimate of your annual return if you hold the bond until maturity and interest rates don't change. This percentage considers both the appreciation or depreciation of the price to its face value and coupon payments. So whether you buy a bond at a premium with high coupons or a bond at a discount with low coupons, you can compare the returns using this figure. Now, when we have a negative yield bond, we aren't necessarily saying that the bondholder is making interest payments to the borrower, but rather that investors are paying such a premium for the bond that the coupon payments and the face value won't compensate them, and they'll end up losing money on their investment. For example, imagine you have a 10-year $1,000 face value bond that pays a 5% coupon, or $50 a year. If this bond sold for $1,000, then your yield to maturity or return would be around 5%, assuming annual compounding. If it sells for $1,300, your yield to maturity is around 1.7%. If it sells for $1,600, well, your yield becomes negative 0.8%. Because the bond has a defined financial benefit in the form of its coupon and face value, there's a price at which point it doesn't make sense to buy the bond. 
And yet, some people will still purchase bonds facing this exact circumstance. Which brings us to the question of the video. Why would they do that? Well, there are four key reasons I believe are worth highlighting. The first is that even with a negative yield, an investor may still technically earn a positive real return if there's deflation. Deflation is the opposite of inflation. While inflation causes prices to rise, deflation causes prices to fall. And while inflation erodes our investment returns, deflation bolsters them. For example, if you earn an 8% nominal return and inflation is 2%, then your wealth is only growing by roughly 6% since your money can now buy 2% fewer goods. But if we instead have deflation of 2%, then your return in real terms becomes roughly 10%. So investors who expect the economy to experience deflation may opt to own a bond with say a negative 1% yield if they know the real return will be a positive 1% with a 2% deflation rate. Now, I know what you're thinking. Even with this bizarre logic, why would an investor opt to hold a negative yield bond instead of just holding cash, which will also benefit and not have a fee associated with it? Well, that brings us to the second point. Holding cash may be a worse option. Think of it this way. If your bank charged you a 1% fee on your checking account, then holding a negative 0.5% government bond may actually be a better alternative to having cash in the bank. Now, Obviously, this is an oversimplified example that ignores liquidity and whatnot, and few individuals currently face this clear of a trade-off. But some banks and larger institutions have this exact predicament. It's something we've discussed in our negative interest rate video, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. But more or less, some institutions are charged for holding or storing their money, so they may opt to buy these bonds instead of paying the higher fees associated with cash. Because government bonds from stable countries like Germany are seen as being virtually risk-free, government bonds are seen as a safe place to park funds until they're needed in the future. The third reason you might see someone buying a negative yield bond is that they might have to. Again, few individual investors face this obligation to buy government bonds, but some funds, pensions, and institutions have mandates that require them to put a certain amount of money into government bonds. On top of this, some banks will require companies to post government bonds as collateral for a loan. So even though they will lose money on the purchase, their hands are somewhat tied if they want the money. But even past these three arguments, which you may call technicalities, loopholes, or oversights that still don't make negative bonds inherently attractive, some free willing people will still buy the bonds for our fourth reason. Even with a negative yield, an investor may still make money from the position. Of course, if an investor holds the bond until maturity, they will naturally lose money. There's no way around that. But in some cases, the bond price will rise even higher than what it currently is. And the investor will be able to sell the bond for more than what they bought it for, earning themselves a profit. Bonds, for example, increase in price when interest rates fall. And even though we have negative rates in countries like Germany, they could fall further still, something that would push bond prices even higher. Government bonds are also seen as a safe haven investment that sometimes increase in price when stocks fall, and they still technically provide some diversification benefit to portfolios. So someone holding government bonds would still earn a positive return if stocks crashed and investors rushed into the security. But even if you can't count on investors blindly bidding up negative yield bond prices, some central banks will buy these bonds to stimulate their economy. So there could still be demand pushing the price of these bonds higher, even if they aren't attractive to normal investors. All of this is why some active money managers will voluntarily hold negative yield bonds. It's usually seen as a call that things are going to get worse. And while it really shouldn't work, we already live in a world where negative interest rates exist. So who can say? But while some individuals may make money from negative yield bonds, I wouldn't say it's a conventional strategy. While it can be justified from a diversification standpoint, trading negative yield bonds really is a case of the greater fool problem, where rather than holding something for its financial merits, you're simply buying it hoping that some other sucker is going to pay more for it in the future. And while that is technically the case for stocks, the difference here is that financially the bond isn't improving over time. There will come a time when the bond matures and pays out less than it's selling for. So unless you're willing to closely watch your bond and believe you have the expertise to time your sell, for most passive and average Joe investors, it doesn't make much sense. But that's why people buy negative yield bonds. 
Fortunately, these paradoxical positions aren't yet commonplace for most portfolios. And even though some places are selling bonds that off the bat are providing negative yields, they do still face lower demand than standard bonds when they're initially sold. Some common sense does appear to prevail. But as we've highlighted, these negative yield bonds technically can be profitable to hold. Which is why as of today, I'll be selling my own negative yield plain bagel co bonds. That's right, for just $1,000, I'll pay you back less than you give me. And who knows, in a few years, it may just be an attractive investment. Thanks for watching. I hope I made the topic clear, and if I didn't, feel free to comment down below and I'll try to clear up any questions. Otherwise, I'd love to hear your thoughts, and if you've bought a negative yield bond in the past, I would love to hear your experience. You know the drill, like, subscribe, bell icon, Richard Coffin. Thanks for joining me today. As today's video probably demonstrated, there are a lot of weird investment opportunities out there. Not all of which are great ideas. But if you're someone who's looking to invest in their digital presence, whether it be for a business, a blog, or even just an interactive resume, building a website can be a great step in gaining some exposure. And Squarespace offers a handy website building tool that I think you should check out. Why? Well, first of all, they sponsored today's video, which is awesome. But aside from that, their service is really easy to use. They have one of the best structured editors in the space, which makes building a professional looking website as easy as picking a template and swapping in your own content. They also have a bunch of awesome features. I personally use them to share my videos, but you can set up a storefront, collect donations, schedule appointments, and much, much more. And last, but certainly not least, they're free to try out. As in you can build your whole website and try their service before you pay a cent. And when you do decide to take your creation live, using coupon code THEPLAINBAGEL will save you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So whether you're building a business or just something for fun, check out Squarespace. Oh, and my own website, if you, you know, want an example or something. Or if you want to learn more about the channel, it's up to you. That'd be cool. Anyway, yeah. Bye.